Today we're going to take a look at the 7850 versus the GTX 660 Ti in part two of the old school showdown. Now today we're going to be taking a look at DX12 titles and also some Vulcan titles and some of those latest games and we're going to be comparing these two cards head to head to see how they perform with not only today's drivers but also in today's games. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with part two of the video where I'm comparing the old school 660 Ti versus the old school 7850. And not only to see how far they've come in terms of drivers, which I did in part one with those old school titles, but also to check at how well they're doing in today's games with also those new APIs, both Vulkan and also uh, DX12. And I'm also been using a program to monitor the frame rates and you guys may be surprised with the results. So with that being said, let's get straight on into the benchmarks and then we can analyze what's been going on here. So the first thing I will get out of the way with is the overclocks, which I did mention in part one as well. They both received a good 100 megahertz on the core there roughly. The uh, 7850 I believe got 111 megahertz and also the GTX 660 got like 105. So also the overclocks were very similar. So the performance gains out of the overclocks would also scale very similar to the results. But what we saw this time around with the 660 Ti was that it was handily beating the 7850 in a lot of these titles, especially the really popular titles. If we look at Dota 2, for instance, it was slaughtering the 7850 by quite a bit, or quite a lot there. However, when we changed over to Vulcan in Dota 2, we noticed a little increase on the 7850, but also a decrease on the 660 Ti, which I was kind of really surprised with because I thought this API was meant to utilize your graphics hardware better than uh, something like DX9 would in Dota 2. So really surprised to see those results in Dota 2 especially. But when we moved over to Doom, we kind of saw that the results were not really doing anything for Vulcan on both the 7850 and the 660 Ti. So that really surprised me as well since I've been hearing such good things about Vulcan. And I know it does have that multi-platform support there, but I'm just wondering why it's not really translating into any real gains when we look at the games like Doom and especially Dota 2, where we kind of would really want those gains since we got the old hardware and we need to extract as many frames as possible out of that hardware as opposed to something new, which will handily beat every title absolutely fine. So kind of a little bit surprised. Oh, and also not to mention that Doom just would not load at all with Vulcan enabled on the 660 Ti. Though when it came to Ashes of the Singularity, a very popular DX12 benchmark, I noticed that the 7850 just gained practically nothing. Uh, and same with the 660 Ti, both going from DX11 to DX12 there, really didn't gain either of these graphics cards 
any net performance increase. The one thing that was interesting about this benchmark was how the 7850 was virtually tying with the 660 Ti. So I guess it may show that when AMD hardware is utilized properly, you can get some big performance gains where the 7850 is now matching the 660 Ti in this particular benchmark. Then moving on to a game like Dark Souls 3, we can see that the 660 Ti handily beat the 7850 with ease. Now also another thing with the Mighty Number no. 9, which is a new game, I noticed that this uh, game was capped essentially at 62 frames per second. So even with vertical sync off, I just couldn't get an accurate benchmark. Or in other words, both these cards performed absolutely fine in this new title at 1080p on high settings. Well, that's the highest settings that it would go to. So if you're looking for a graphics card to play Mighty Number no. 9, then you're going to be happy with something like a 7850 or a 660 Ti. And then looking at this last benchmark time spy, which has kind of got some controversy surrounding it. I'm not really going to go into it in this video, but we saw that the GTX 660 Ti was beating the 7850 by quite a bit there as well. That 30% margin is kind of coming back into play here. Though one thing I noticed with the time spy this time around, and I have tested this over like a week ago, is there's no option there for that asynchronous support thing anymore. So I can't turn that on and off. So pretty weird. I'll try and look into this a little bit more. I will also be looking into the Vulcan results a little bit more as well, especially on the AMD card, the 7850, since I just didn't get an increase at all in Dota 2 and I didn't really get an increase at all in uh, Doom, which is where that game is really meant to shine, especially since the 7850 is on the GCN architecture. I was kind of surprised to see that I was getting little to no gains. Also, some other things I'll touch on as well before I get out of here, maybe a subjective thing, but I thought the GTX 660 Ti on the Vulkan API in Dota 2 gave the best input lag. In other words, it gave the lowest input lag. So if you're a competitive gamer in Dota 2, you may wish to, even though you get a little bit of an FPS drop there, you may wish to turn that on because I thought the input lag was insanely low. That was just a subjective thing. I'd have to do more testing to give you guys an accurate picture of that. But also another thing as well with my benchmarks, they're very consistent as well. I test apples to apples. And since we've got two different graphics cards here over two different APIs, it'd be something like apples to apples to apples to apples. Anyway, that's about it for me today, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments about today's graphics cards or about today's tests, then be sure to drop a, qu a, <laughs> a question or a comment in the comment section below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And also I will be doing some more follow-up tests with Vulkan and with the uh, different APIs on sort of those more newer graphics cards because the results I got here today were really weird, especially on the 7850 with Vulcan. I was supposed to, I was, well, I was expecting a bigger increase than I actually got. And also on the GTX 660 Ti, where I actually got a drop on Dota 2 there going switching to Vulcan. So kind of surprised there. Anyway, guys, I will see you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Oh, yeah. That's how you clean your graphics card. <laughs>